What's up guys? It is the one, the only Fatal Ending here. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're all having a groovy good day because today I am going over the Sony a6400 camera and kind of going down the roads of how to set it up as your new webcam. It's gonna be very exciting. I already took a look at it and it is an absolutely amazing camera. I'm gonna be using it for not only live streaming and YouTube videos, but also photography. So I think this is a great investment. So if you do have a couple of dollars laying around and you wanna get yourself one of these cameras, I definitely recommend it. And also I'm currently using the Logitech C920. I've been using this for a couple of years. So the fact that I'm finally upgrading to a nice professional grade camera, professional, it's probably more entry level, but it is certainly awesome and I'm very excited to see what this will bring to the channel. So if you do wanna use this camera as your webcam, you're gonna need a few different components and such to make that happen. So first off, you obviously need the camera itself, the Sony A6400. You're gonna need some sort of capture card, which I'm gonna be using the Elgato Camlink cable. There's plenty of other alternatives out there. There's one for $30. You can get any other Elgato capture card, the Avermedia capture cards, whatever is out there. Get one. I definitely recommend getting a higher quality one though because you're getting an expensive camera. You might as well have yourself an expensive capture card to go along with it. You're gonna need a dummy battery so that way there's constant battery life going to the camera. You don't have to worry about swapping batteries midway through a stream or a YouTube video or whatever. Instead, there's just a constant flow of battery life going to it. You're obviously gonna need some sort of tripod or arm mount, which is what I'm going to be using. However, I don't have one of the pieces needed to make it happen. So I'm balls out of luck for now. Instead, we're just gonna be using a scuffed tripod. You're also gonna need a micro HDMI cable that plugs into the camera itself, into the Elgato, and then into your PC. That way, it gives you the connection and you're able to see what you're going to be seeing in a short little bit. All right, now that we have the camera all ready to go and the settings that we are going to be applying are pretty easy to uh, navigate through. So the first thing you wanna do is turn on movie mode. That way you're getting the best possible picture. And once when you have that selected, you wanna simply hit the menu button, which is at the top right here. You can't really see that, I don't think, from the angle. And you wanna go over to the fifth column under setup. When you're in setup, you wanna click down to make sure you're in it and then tab over to the fourth column. When you are here, go to HDMI settings and you want to select what resolution you plan on live streaming at or recording at. In this case, I'm gonna be using just 1080p. I'm going to have my frame rate as 60 FPS because that's what I'm streaming at. And I'm also going to turn off HDMI info display off as well as TC output, which I cannot remember if that was manually off or not, but I have it off anyways. What HDMI info display is, is this stuff down here. When you are live streaming, this will appear on the camera's feed under your Elgato software or OBS, whatever program you're using. So you definitely don't want that. So make sure that is off. And also while you are in the menu settings, you wanna go over to the second column and select your exposure to manual exposure or manual mode. So that way you can adjust the settings how you please. So the first thing we are going to change is the shutter speed. So the general rule of thumb for changing your shutter speed is to have it double of what your frame rate is at. So if you're streaming at 30 FPS, you want your shutter speed to be one over 60. If you're streaming at 60 FPS or recording at 60 FPS, you want your shutter speed double that, which the closest one is one over 125. The reason being is it reduces the lag and skip of what you see. There's gonna be very minimal motion blur and all that stuff. So make sure you do adjust your shutter speed accordingly. And to change your f-stop, all you need to do is adjust your lens accordingly. I'm using the kit lens, so I just need to simply zoom it in. And if you notice, the f-stop does go up, or if I zoom it out, it does go down. What the f-stop does is pretty much just allow a lot of light into the lens. The smaller the f-stop, the more light comes in. The larger the f-stop, the less light comes in. So what I prefer to have is it as low as possible. That way there's more light going to the lens and I'm not having to use as much lighting to brighten me up. To change the ISO, all you need to do is click right on the knob and the ISO does pop up. In my case, I'm gonna be using auto ISO because I do stream in the morning and the light does change heavily as the sun rises. So it kind of is your call on your lighting situation. Again, I'm using auto, but if you are streaming during the night and there's no extra lighting that's gonna be shining through your windows randomly, like the sunrise or whatever, well, you can adjust it to whatever setting you want, but again, I'm just using auto due to uh, the amount of light that I will have shining in throughout the day. Also, to change up some more settings, you simply wanna hit the FN key and change the white balance. That's one thing I would definitely recommend because I noticed when I was using auto white balance, which is way at the top, obviously, 
I noticed when I would back away from the camera, I would turn like a greenish hue color. But then when I would move closer, I would turn back to like a regular daylight color, which again, I'm just using day white. For my color preference, you can obviously go down and customize your own, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna use day white. And there are also some other settings that you can break into. You can adjust the exposure if you want to, or you can change some of the other options in here, metering mode, flash, yada, yada. But I'm not gonna touch any of that because we already did the nitty gritties with the exposure by adjusting it manually ourselves and changing the white balance to how we please. All right, now that we have the camera all set up, mounted and plugged in, ready to go, we need to add it to our OBS software, which is what I will be using. If you're using another software, I'm not sure if I'd be able to help you. But you simply just wanna hit add. You wanna to go to video capture, which I already have it added as a webcam. Yeah, right there. But you can just simply hit okay on the layer and then click this, the pull down on device and go to cam link 4K and there you have it. It's automatically recognized and ready to go. And here we are. We're gonna be doing the test right now of the greatness this camera has. It is absolutely amazing. Again, I'm using Logitech C920. It's uh, not the greatest picture. I do admit it looks good, but putting it side by side with a camera that, it's, that has this much power in it is absolutely amazing. So we're just gonna simply tap down the webcam and you'll see how good it looks. Look at that, dude. Look at that. Like it looks, it looks so good but I don't like it at the same time because you can literally see so much detail. Like, look at look at my hair. You can see my detail in my hair. You can see my beautiful, luscious, fully grown eyebrows, finally. So those people that make fun of me for not having eyebrows, I do have eyebrow hair. You can see, like, my facial hair, all my blemishes and such. Like, it's, it's crazy how good of a camera this thing is. And I, I'm very excited to use it for uh, future live streams and such, but it's just so weird going from this to the Logitech camera. Look at the difference. Here, we're, we're gonna slide this over a little bit. This is gonna be a very scuffed side-by-side -side comparison, but <laughs> it is just ridiculous, man. Where am I here? Oh, Nelly. Look at the difference, dude. Look at the difference. I mean, granted, I have one flipped and the other one's not, so that might look a little funky. Hey there, Fatal, how's it going there, dude? Wow. But yeah, this is one thing I was talking about with the auto balance. So I'm gonna move myself out of the way here. When the light does adjust in my room, because I have the auto balance or the white balance, it will automatically adjust and make it look not as harsh compared to the Logitech camera over here, which is just completely washed out. That is not a good thing when it comes to this camera. So that was one thing I really annoyed. But with the Sony a6400, I don't really have to worry about that. It, it looks fine. I'm not washed out or anything like that. And it seriously is a beautiful camera. And I'm very, very excited to be using it as time goes on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you set up the Sony a6400 and use it as your webcam. I hope this kind of helped you figure out how to get it all situated, as well as maybe determine whether or not you want to invest in this camera and use it for your YouTube channel as well. So I am definitely going to enjoy this camera. It is absolutely amazing, especially compared to, again, the Sony, not the Sony, the Logitech C920. Definitely a huge price difference, but I feel like it will be worth it in the end. So again, I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope this was assistful for you in any way, shape, or form. If you do want to use the links down below to purchase any of these products, that would be greatly appreciated because I will get a little bit of kickback from it at no extra cost to you. But guys, I hope you did enjoy again, and I will see you in the next live stream or video. And as always, guys, thank you so very much for watching.